In this how-to video for the Restroom Cloud PMS, I'm going to be going over the check-in process from the dashboard. The first screen that you see when you log in to the Cloud PMS is your personalized dashboard. You'll notice on the left-hand side are all of the reservations. On the right-hand side, there are shared staff notes, tasks for the property, and all my recent booking engine activity. When someone is checking into the property, typically most properties do several different things during that check-in process. First, we need to notify the system that that guest has actually checked in and is occupying the unit that they've reserved. The next thing that we need to do is we need to cover any payments. Some properties do uh, all their payments at check-in, some pre-auth and post. Some have already taken a deposit payment at the time of the reservation and they take final payment at check-in, some at check-out. So we cover payments. Typically the last thing that we do is we're doing some type of letter, either a registration card or we're printing out an invoice as a receipt because we've taken final payment here at check-in. So walking through this check-in process, the Cloud PMS has a check-in wizard. So. As you see here for my arrivals, I see Josh Wise is coming in arriving today. I see that he's a single occupant as opposed to a group. I see that the room that he's staying in, the broken arrow, is clean. And I see the dates of his stay, the number of nights. These icons over here are indicating that there is a tag related to this reservation and it's been flagged as important. This money sign here is indicating the payment status. So in working through the system, the default colors here are red for no payment, yellow for partial payment, and green for full payment. So right here on my dashboard, I see who's coming. I see where he's staying and if the unit is prepared for him. I see that there's a tag that I need to be aware of and I see the payment status. If I click on this particular reservation, I then have the options to see some other data. This link here will allow me to view the reservation details, everything I need to know about this reservation. If I click on this link here, it'll allow me to view the person. So I'll be able to see all the detailed notes related to that person, which include their contact information, name, address, phone number, emails. It will allow me to see any notes or details that I have on that person, any historical public and private notes, as well as all historical reservations. You'll then see that I have the access to link to the invoice. If I need to see any specific line item details related to that invoice, I would click on this link here. Here are all the tags that are related to this particular contact and reservation. And then over here on the right hand side, I see payment information. Here's their all of their charges, all of the payments that they've made and their balance due. Now, from here, I have a couple of different options. I can check this guest in. I can print out a letter. I can add any charges, any additional add-ons, point of sales, package, gift certificates, or I can make any payments. In this example, I want to walk through the check-in process, so I'm going to hit the check-in button. As it walks through the check-in wizard, you'll see that I've got some options here. I can either jump in and edit this invoice. I can add payments or generate any letter. Now, whatever I want to have defaulted that happens every single time, because most of your check-ins always go in the same order, I would make those adjustments to these sliders here, and then I would hit this always use these check-in options. You'll notice here I can default the letter for the check-in every single time. And in my case, my custom default settings are I never want to edit the invoice, I always want to add a payment and I always want to generate a letter and the letter I want to generate is a registration card. Now, those are my default settings every time I do a check-in. If something changes from my normal process and I need to edit that on the fly, I can do so by simply toggling that I do not want to take a payment. And as long as I don't click this setting to always use these check-in options, it's not going to change my default settings. It'll allow me to adjust those on the fly. In progressing through this process, I'm going to hit the check-in button. 
Now I'm automatically being prompted to take a payment because there's a remaining balance. So the system is intelligent enough to know here is the remaining balance and because I've told the system that I default that I take final payment here at check-in, I'm going to process that payment here. Again, the system is flexible enough if you want to work outside of your normal default options, you can skip this step here. For me, I'm going to take a payment. Then after I've taken that payment, which I just did, the system automatically progresses that check-in process by my default settings to my letter and if you recall I prompted it to use my registration card. So now I can print out my registration card to finalize that check-in process. Again, the system has the flexibility if for whatever reason you want to skip this step this particular time, you go ahead and hit the skip button. Now that guest has been checked in to that room I've taken the payment and I've taken care of any letters. So this concludes our video on our check-in wizard or check-in process. Hopefully you've seen the power of being able to default your settings both on editing invoice, taking any payments, or printing out any letters or invoices and you can default those settings or you've seen the flexibility of this feature to where you can skip any of the settings you've set as default. Thank you so much for watching.